Hey guys, it's Armytrix, and in this video I'll be showing you how to record depth of field in CSGO using merv underscore streams in HLAE. So first of all, all you have to do is start up HLAE, which I can find over here. And before you launch it, it will probably be easier to actually make sure it's in windowed mode. So it's easier to tab back out and copy and paste particular commands in. And you have a resolution slightly less than 1920. I use this resolution as it's the widescreen type resolution that I use in my videos. And once you've got everything set up in there, which I'll show another time in a different tutorial, as long as you know how to use HLAE, that's fine, just launch up CSGO. Alright, once CSGO has been launched, all you have to do is go and find the demo that you want to use first of all. And mine will probably be this one over here, SLTV's Cold Zero vs Navi, 1v4 on train. Now quickly find the player you want to focus on, in this case that is Cold Zero. Over here, and go to the tick. Okay, so once everything's loaded up and ready, execute any commands you want to use before playing, or at least recording. And now we need to get Merv underscore streams ready. So first of all, you want to look up Merv underscore streams here, which is what you use to add all the depth of field commands and different layers to use to record at the same time. In essence, Merv underscore streams is basically start movie, but it lets you record different layers at the same time instead of having to go through the hassle of using start movie several times. So first of all, we'll need to add a few different layers into Merv underscore streams. And we can do this by going to Merv underscore streams add. And first we'll want to add the raw layer, just the background footage of the trains and the cars and everything else in the background not the view model or anything else. So go merv underscore streams add base fx and then name it whatever you want. So in this case we'll call it raw which is because it's the raw footage. And once you've done that you'll want to go and edit it. So merv underscore streams edit raw. And this brings up a list of all the commands you can use to edit it. So first of all what we want to do is make sure that the HUD is disabled for raw which I'm pretty sure it's disabled by default for all things anyway, so you don't really need to type in this command, but just in the case, you can use that to check. Then, you want to make sure view model is turned off, so draw underscore view model zero. And you also want to do the same with player model actions. And that one is invisible, not zero. And also weapon model actions, if I can find it like that. And once you've done that, that's pretty much it for the raw layer. Then you can move on and go merv underscore streams add. And we'll want a layer for the HUD. So that's the kill feed and everything else like the crosshair. So we'll want to do mat entity which brings up a green screen. And you want to call it HUD or whatever you want to. For this one it'll be easier for us to see what we're doing if we preview it, so go merv underscore streams preview HUD and we can see it creates a green screen. You can use merv underscore streams preview to preview any layer you've created, like the raw layer as well you can use to preview. Anyway, once you've gone into HUD, this one will want to explicitly enable the HUD, so we go edit HUD draw HUD 1, so the HUD is always turned on. Then for this one we don't need anything else, so we can turn view draw view model off. Zero. Go to player models action invisible. And the same applies for weapon models action again. And that is the HUD done. It may look kind of weird right now, but that is because it's not recording the whole thing. And uh, that will just disappear once you actually start recording because you can see the stickers and stat trek here but that will disappear when you start recording now you want to add another layer merv underscore streams add and this one a matte entity again because we want to separate the gun layer and the model layer for if you want to add effects later on in after effects so add matte entity and we'll want the models like that and just you can edit this again to whatever you want it to be and in this case because we're only drawing the models you can do draw view model zero because we don't want that 
we only want the player models. Player models, action, draw. Make sure that's on, and for weapon models, we want that to be invisible. Like that. And now you want to add one more layer for the guns. This one is a matte entity once again. Because we want the green screen again. Guns. And edit this. So that you have draw view model turned on. One. Player models action invisible. And weapon models action you want to be visible in this. And that's that bit done. Then you want to add once again another layer and this time we're going to be adding the depth of field layer. So it's merv underscore streams add depth of world as that's the type of layer we're going to be using. And depth is the name we're going to call it. You can call it whatever you want of course. And to make things easier we can preview this by doing merv underscore streams preview depth. And now I can see what the world looks like with depth. And this is the area that's going to be blurred most heavily, and then things that are lighter grey are less heavily blurred. So, merv underscore streams edit depth. And first of all, we want to remove everything that we don't need. Like player models action, we're going to do draw depth, so we can see the depth of each of these. Oops, there we go. And weapon models action, we're also going to draw depth. We do not want to draw the view model as we've already got that in a separate layer. And that's done. So this bit should disappear afterwards. Okay. So now we want to adjust the actual depth and this seems too blurry from here. So we'll change the depth val max to about 1500. And the depth val to anything ranging between 200 and say 400 should look okay. So 200 is a little too close, let's try 350. That seems alright, maybe a lot further away. 400, and there we go, that looks like an alright amount of blur. This seems fine right now, and this should be okay for when you record. Now to check what layers you have, do Merv underscore streams print, and you've got all five layers on here, raw, HUD, models, guns, and depth. And now we're going to start recording soon. So if you look here, I've got a list of commands you'll probably want to use. So merv underscore streams record name. That sets the name of your recording and the directory you want to save it to. So that's the directory here. And the name is the last thing you're going to type in it. So I'm going to call it cold zero. Cold Z or cold Z Z. And then do merv underscore streams record format TGA, which is the file format we're going to record to. And now we can start recording. So these are the commands I used to record. I'll put all these in the description of the video for you to use. Host underscore frame rate 300 timescale 0, merv SND timescale 1. This syncs the audio so you can record the audio as well. And here is the audio we're going to record. We'll call that cold ZZZZZ as well. And that is a WAV file, so it's just the audio. And then we're going to toggle the console to turn it off and merv underscore screams record start to start recording. Now just a warning, it can look kind of epileptic and it can take quite a long time, but once you hit enter it will start recording. This will take quite a while, but once it's done you can tab out again and find the commands to end it, which are over here. <clears throat> and then you go back into CSGO and you open up the console once again and copy paste the commands in and it should stop and it stopped recording the movie it can be quite difficult to do and can kind of hurt your eyes if you look at it too long so just be careful with it just leave it to record once you've actually started recording and come back after it's done so once you've done that you won't be needing CSGO anymore you can quit out that and you can close out all of this and now you'll need After Effects to merge the clips together. So open up After Effects once you're done. And in After Effects make a new composition and you'll need to go and import the files that we've made. 
so, uh, we'll go and find it in YouTube, and we saved it to TGA web over here. So it's called Cold ZZZ, take zero, and we've got all the different layers lined up here. So inside depth, we're going to find all the TGA files and make sure target sequence is clicked here. So it will import all these files in order and you won't need to do anything else. Just click the first one and hit import. And it will import all the different files in there. Then go to import again and you'll need to do the same thing for the rest of them. Okay, once you're done, you've got all five layers over here. Drag the raw layer down here into a new composition, like this, and you'll have the raw first layer here, doing whatever you want it to do. And next, you'll want to add the next separate uh, layers with the green screens on. This one happens to be the models layer, which is why there's nothing on it, because there were no visible models on it at the time. And you'll just want to go to effects or presets, key light, add it to it, make sure you pick the color picking tool and hit that and it'll it'll turn the lime green color invisible and everything else that's on the screen not this one is the hud layer over here which you could have turned off if you didn't want it but i did in this case and then you've got the weapon layer here add a key light once again and then turn that off you might want to move the weapon light underneath the hud layer and finally, you'll want to move your depth of field layer up here into a separate composition, like that. That becomes Comp2. Then go back to your original composition and move Comp2 to the bottom layer. Then, in where your raw layer, which is the second to last layer, you'll want to add a camera lens blur effect over here. Drag that onto your second to last raw layer. Then it'll turn everything blurry apart from things on top of that layer, like the guns, the HUD, and everything else. But for the camera lens blur, you'll want to go into layer and hit comp 2. That will adjust the blur according to your depth of field layer. And so here you can see it's only blurred the background over here, not the trains. So the blurring is accurate here. And you'll make sure it is decagon blur so it's less so it's less intruding and actually follows the path of the background. And once you've done that, you're done. That's everything you need to do. Just go to composition, add to render queue, and make sure your composition settings so show it as 60 FPS, even though we did record it at 300, we can change that later, and then you just start it going. So once you, so you go into render queue and then you hit render after you've selected the place you want to render to. Make sure it's set to lossless as we don't want anything being lost here as we're going to edit it later. So once you've done that, you'll want to open up a piece of software called AVI F-Rate. So AVI F-Rate can be found online and I'll link it in the description. It is this piece of software over here, quite old but works really well. So AVI F-Rate lets you change the frames per second of any file. And it will basically speed up the file. So in this case we want to find our code 0. Uh, one over here. And that should be somewhere. Here it is. This one is already set to 300 because I did it earlier, but it should say 60 up here. And you just change that to 300.0000 and hit apply. Now it should go at the normal frame rate and normal speed. Otherwise, when you put it into Vegas, it will go at a slow uh, half or quarter speed. And that's it for this video. That's everything you need to do, then you can import it into Sony Vegas and put whatever effects you want on it. That's it for this video, thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and as always, don't forget to subscribe.